Hello and welcome to my library. Today I want to do a reading wrap up for the month of December. I'll just talk about the books that I read in December and a little bit of the things that I started that um, I didn't DNF but I'll definitely be reading in January. So the first book that I finished in the month of December seems to be Winter in Sokcho by Elisa Shaw Dusapin. So I read that and Tempest by Beverly Jenkins in a vlog during Vlogmas but I'm just gonna quickly recap it here. So Winter in Sokcho follows a woman who lives in Sokcho, Korea. It's at the it's like a northern south it's in northern south korea uh it's like a coastal tourist town and it just follow it's like a slice of life following her during and meeting following her get a slice of life what her life is like um but also meeting her meeting this tourist and forming like an attachment almost to him and originally i gave this a four but now i'm giving this like a 3.5 i really this one I think this won the National Book Award for Translated Fiction that's how I found out about it and it's translated from French and the character is French Korean as well the main character is French Korean as well and there's a lot of things that happen in this short book and I think I what I enjoyed most about it was the fact that we got to see like this person's experience as specifically as a French Korean person in South Korea in this went up uh, this tourist town during winter and it was very like wintry as atmospheric but other than getting that slice of life in that winter atmosphere I really didn't I really wasn't moved by like the characters like struggles or her like decision making or you know any of those things it was interesting but it just wasn't like groundbreaking for me and yeah, so I, I borrowed that one from the library. So definitely check your library if you have interest in that one. Um, also, I read Tempest, as I said. I think I gave this one a three. Um, I didn't really like the storyline, which is not like, I'm, this is no fault of the books because it's not like, it's not on Beverly Jenkins to change my mind about a trope. But this book follows Tempest, or no, I'm like follows Tempest. This book follows Regan Carmichael, who moves to be a mayor or a bride in Wyoming and it's a history of what year is this set is this in the, it's in the 19th century I think it's set in the 19th century I think she moves to be a mayor or a bride and a mom to um the Colton Lee and his daughter who Anna I think his daughter name and yeah so this is in the 19th century which I actually did enjoy that part seeing the history you know Beverly Jenkins writes historical fiction so seeing the history which is I think I I viewed it as a um a negative before a con before because I really honestly didn't like the romance because of the romance like there's a um like the wife previously passed away so all the different um drama points that come from that within like the family um there's just so many like I just that whole thing I don't like at all and I don't think I knew that that was happening before but I am glad I read it because like I said the history of this is a Wyoming territory 1885 so I don't think this is like my first fiction I think yeah because I'm currently reading one now but this was my first fiction I think set in the 19th century a black fiction set in the 19th century I really did like the book for the history part I didn't really love the romance but if you actually do like that um I do like the um the arranged marriage and marriage of convenience trope this was like less of that and more of you know becoming a mom a stepmom and um just like all the the journey in that part and then also just learning about Wyoming territory for black people and you know all those things I will read Spring's book it's called Wild Rain and I think that one will be more I'm still interested in the history part and that's probably why this one is not lower than a three but I think while Rain's like romance part will be very interesting for me in just because of the type of person she is and I won't it, Rain is more like um like more of an outcast in the family because she doesn't want the same things that she is supposed to want um so I really like that and she's kind of like she doesn't really seem like she wants to be tied down to anybody anyway so I really like those 
tropes in addition to the history part so i really am looking forward to wild rain and that was also recommended to me by multiple people so the next one i read was a christmas carol by charles dickens i love this book so much i am so surprised by that um so christmas carol you know this scrooge he's he's visited by the christmas the ghost of christmas past present and future this is my first interaction with the original story i've only seen like the tv version the sitcom retellings you know movie retellings all those different things but i love the writing style of this book i loved the narration too by hugh grant i love like everything about that just was like i felt so i felt so much like the prop i said in the vlog when i read it the propaganda worked on me i felt so many christmas vibes after that um it made me happy the writing style of course like, that was my first thing i've read by charles Dickens too the writing style the the joy the emotions the emotions that pull out of me i think that really separates a lot of books from um just me like okay three like oh i really like this four or like oh my goodness five <laughs> the emotional attachment that's what gives it a five so yeah that I don't know it made me like the propaganda when I say the propaganda is working it's like wow it makes me want to be a better person really really loved it one and I'm still surprised that I love it so much um oh I didn't finish this book and this is what I mean by so these next two I didn't finish yet but since I've read a good chunk of them I'm counting them as like one book but I'm gonna I'm not I'm gonna work on this one in January you'll see more in my January like planning video um but then this one I'm gonna just say for next Christmas so let's talk about the Christmas one we're already talking about a Christmas Carol so this is a treasury of African-American Christmas stories compiled and edited by Betty Collier Thomas and these are stories that range from like the 1860s to the 1950s and it's as it is after American Christmas stories. So I read a good number of these. Well, not a good number, but I read a, good, a, a few of them. And the way this works is so these are there are stories from W.E.B. Du Bois. There's stories and poems and just various forms of literature um, by W.E.B. Du Bois, Alice Moore Dunmar, Langston Hughes. I didn't get the Langston Hughes's. Um, there's another one that's a famous person. Oh, August M. Hodges, who um, I think he has multiple in there. But these are all like black, um, like notable people in black literature, black scholars, black, um, well, African-American or black American scholars and journalists and writers. And these really give you a context of like life back then you get a peek at life in the 19th century you get a peek at like schools like um Alice Moore Dunmar she was a teacher in like New York somewhere in New York City and she wrote this story and it was based on the conversations she heard from her students and I know this because Betty Collier Thomas the gym that she is actually before each article or before each like piece she has like she adds context so you understand when you go into it you understand like why this was talked about or why um like why this was brought up or like why is this relevant for the time so i don't have to look that up and see like what kind i know she's a scholar of some sort because i looked her up but just I'm actually curious like what she studies and how she was able to find all those like find all of this but also find like there was one that was talking about why like they were talking about trends like she was talking about there was one where she was talking about trends and talking about why this was brought up and it was because of this was a, a very popular thing at the time and I think that's so fascinating and I really enjoyed this one um I don't I don't think I'm gonna read it throughout the year but definitely probably starting at the end of like after Thanksgiving of this year <laughs> getting back to it because I really enjoyed it and if I need to do any research for any stories I'm working on definitely going back to this but I really really I well, I'm like I was in the bookstore browsing when we were in Seattle and I wouldn't honestly wouldn't have not have known this otherwise known about this otherwise but this actually came out a couple years ago so let's see it was published by Beacon Press Books in 2018 and I wouldn't have known about it if I didn't walk in like just <sighs> so really enjoyed this one and you'll see a trend and definitely in my January like my first vlog of January and then like January TBR like I'm really 
fascinated right now by 19th century black life in America. Yeah, very fascinated by that. Okay, now we go back to A Tale for the Time Being by Ruth Ozeki. This book I, I read, this was like my Seattle trip. I was reading this while I was on that trip. And I read a little bit since I've been back, maybe. I don't remember. Um, I'm, It's been a few weeks now since I've been back. But uh, this book follows now Yasutani and a writer whose name is... What is her name? I don't actually know the writer's name. But in, it follows now Yasutani and a writer who is based in the Pacific Northwest. A lunchbox and all kind of um, different paraphernalia wash up on the shore in the Pacific Northwest. They think it's um, debris from the or things from people from the 2011 tsunami that hit in Japan and the writer starts reading Nao's diary and Nao is a suicidal teenager and you start learning about her life and her family, her hundred and four year old Zen Buddhist grandmother so who's a nun zen buddhist nun grandmother and it's really an emotional read i think i don't know much but from what i've read from like people in discord and like people who read ruth ozeki is very emotional all of her works are emotional but this one is also emotional like there was a point it was a oh i will i'm still haven't forgotten this but there was this point in the book where it was a father talking about i think it was after the it was this family like didn't survive the earthquake and stuff and it was just like the way she talked about the, with the ancestors, um, like gave us guide to not build here, and then but like when she was talking about the father and the father's just the father's speech when he was talking to the TV, it was just so emotional. I almost cried listening to that. Like on, I was on the plane, so yeah, I was listening to it. And Ruth Ozeki is a great narrator. I was like, oh wow, who is this narrator? I love them. And then it was like read by the author, good at everything apparently. But anyway the yeah so I really am enjoying this so far um so Ruth not Ruth um now lived in the U.S. for a little while and that's like part of the storyline and part of why she is the way that she is but it's like I the only thing I wish I was like I wish this wasn't said in the U.S. at all but like this is not really a critique it's just like a personal like preference but yeah I really am enjoying this so far and I'm gonna get back to this in January but um I had to take a break and honestly what I'm reading now was is like an, even a little bit harder but <laughs> anyway anyway going back to finishing this wrap up oh before I talk about the last book I also finally started Segu by Maurice Conde which I'm buddy reading with Margaret Pernard and I'm also really enjoying this too um but I'm reading it slower I'm in between so many books right now which is new for me um or I say I would say allowing myself to be in between so many books is new for me you know I'm just going with the flow and honestly I'm really enjoying myself so I'm not even gonna but I didn't tell you what Sego was about so Sego is the year night 17 I keep doing that I keep mixing it the numbers up but the year is 1797 and the kingdom is Sego of is flourishing fed by the wealth of its noblemen and the power of its warriors and Segu follows the life of Dusika Traori, the king's most trusted advisor and his four sons whose fates embody the forces tearing at the fabric of the nation. So it's like an epic based on actual events, actual people. It's before colonization, but it's still kind of like telling the story of um, this, this uh, nation is, nation is a word that's not what I want to use, but um, I'll just use say the tagline. Uh, the, the battle for the soul of Africa has begun. And Segu was translated from French by Barbara Bray. So the last book I want to talk about is Letters to a Young Poet by Re Rainier Mary Maria Rilke. And it is translated by Charlie Luth. So Rilke is a poet. And at this point when he's getting letters, he's getting, he's received letters from a, an, an inspiring poet who like they went to the same like school and what this book is is basically Rilke's responses to in their correspondence and throughout the book it's like you know various life advice it's poet like advice for him to become the best poet he can be but really it turns out to be the best trying to be the best like person 
and honestly the way I'm describing it kind of sounds <laughs> a little boring but it really is just like those in the in the advice that he's giving him about being a good poet in like just becoming the poet that he wants to be he is really giving him life advice I gave this one a 4.5 and I really enjoyed it I really actually enjoyed it and I'm trying to figure out why I just am so hesitant to say that like I don't know I think part of it is because it's like a, it's like a little dramatic and a little bit pretentious like some of the stuff is like okay like it's a little like taking it itself sometimes I do feel like yeah I do feel like Roka is like taking himself like too serious like I like I don't know maybe it's like I just don't care about anything that much but it was just kind of like, uh, okay. But like with that also, there were such great quotes. Like, yeah. So yeah, what I liked about it was like the quotes about living love and solitude. His thoughts, on, like I just sometimes, it was just like the part about um, like being an artist and like caring about it. Like just, just like this vibe where like sometimes people are like, if you don't want if you don't want this enough to sacrifice this and this and like live only for this then why are you even doing it that's kind of the vibe i would get sometimes like i'd probably say like 10 percent, so it's not too much but i'm just like okay like whatever but i really did feel like i really did like what he had to say about a, a good number of things so i got this one for a like free download at the library but a lot of these classics are also available like on amazon for free too like you know you could just um, like a lot of classics are, are free in the ebook form, I should say, um, to download. But I'll read you some of the quotes that I really liked. And you'll see why, like, despite all the, like, feeling back and forth, why I was like, yeah, this feels like a 4.5 for me. Things are not all as graspable and sayable as on the whole we are led to believe. Most events are unsayable, occur in a space that no word has ever penetrated. And most unsayable of all are works of art mysterious existences whose life endures alongside ours which passes away these things he's talking about art these things cannot be measured by time a year has no meaning and 10 years are nothing to be an artist means not to calculate and count to grow and ripen like a tree which does not hurry the flow of its sap and stands at ease in the spring gales without fearing that no summer may follow it will come but it comes only to those who are patient who are simply there in their vast quiet tranquility as if eternity lay before them it is a lesson i learn every day and hardships i am thankful for patience is all he's talking about he talks about patience solitude not running away from things that are difficult like i really do like that and i like at the end this quote um do not think that the person who is trying to console you lives effortless, effortlessly among the simple quiet words that sometimes make you feel better. His life is full of troubles and sadness and falls far short of them. But if it were any different, he could never have found the words that he did. So that's kind of why I feel I really enjoyed this so much. Like 4.5, like, yes, like I did really enjoy this. And there's other quotes that I really want to keep reading. And this is the last one I read. This is the last one I read. Just be attentive towards what rises up inside you and place it above everything that you notice round about. What goes on in your innermost being is worth all your love. This is what you must work on however you can and not waste too much time and too much energy on clarifying your attitude to other people. Yes. Okay. I really enjoyed that one and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be mad about it. You know, I liked it, okay? <laughs> so I think that's it. Let's see. Yeah, so that's all the books that I have read in the month of December 2021. We're now into 2022. And let me know if you read any of these, have any thoughts on any of these, or if you have a favorite book that you read during this month. And that is all for this video. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.